So hello and welcome to the very first episode of Srinivasan Sit Down in which Rishabh Srinivasan and Adit Srinivasan sit down and have a conversation about trending and interesting topics uh, which is very relevant especially because we are both college students and we want to talk to Gen Z in general. So the reason we're here right now is because at 12 a.m. we had another cousin whose birthday it was and we were on a call but that cousin never showed up and we kept talking and like after a while the conversation became very interesting and insightful. So I was like stop let's talk like let's take this to another platform and let's record this and upload it on youtube uh so that's why we're here rishab what do you what would you like to say as an introduction yeah so hey guys so my name is uh, rishab srinivasan i am in mumbai and i'm pursuing my third year computer engineering degree from uh, sardar patel so basically we were having this conversation and recently i just remembered like skimming through videos and articles in class and i read about uh, a specific person known as jensen huang so basically if you'll know him if you'll up keeping update with the technological world basically he's the ceo of nvidia so basically he just dropped a bombshell of a statement like 2 3 days ago saying that their pri- nvidia a such a huge company their primary goal right now is to make programming literally make programming one of the most important things in a in the degree of a computer engineering student irrelevant yes like they want to make it irrelevant they want to make so that future kids generations basically they shouldn't learn programming because ai artificial intelligence should do their job for them so i just wanted to discuss more about this topic so i found a like minded person and here we are it's interesting that you say like nvidia ka the guy wants to make it irrelevant because at least 2 years ago or like something like that i all i could think about and talk about was like program is programming is no longer a luxury it's a necessity you need to know how to like talk in code and like understand at least fundamentals and stuff and that is changed primarily only because of one thing ai right if there is only one major difference between 2021 and 2024 it is ai right so i think true. one more very true ha huh, like add on go on no keep going on i am just listening to you and uh, yeah you're providing really cool references keep going theek hai so i think one important thing is uh, when we thought ai would come up and stuff we thought it would uh, automate the uh, blue collar labor like for example your house maid or someone like that would get automated by ai because that's how it primarily started right robots and stuff were doing the amazon warehouse jobs which was basically just carrying stuff and putting it to another place or like a mcdonald's server or something like that so we thought ki it would be the like the unskilled labor work workers and stuff which would primarily get automated by ai but ai started like open source ai started with chat gpt which was the most creative thing you could do like text to text and it could like write songs write linkedin posts write books and stuff right and now we are moving towards a more technical side so ai took care of the creative side first chat gpt dali whatever and now we're coming to the technical side with devin i think that's like the main topic that we have for today devin uh, especially since you're in computer science and i am also doing engineering uh, so this is very relevant and useful for college students who will graduate in the next 5 years who are currently in college right so one thing i want to ask you is you've done computer science for like two and a half years almost three years okay. is there some part in your curriculum or like while doing in general coding that ai cannot do like in the next 3 odd years see that that's a good question see like i'll tell you a bit of a background before i come to the real point so basically when i started engineering chat gpt wasn't around so basically i had to program by hand long tedious codes and everything java c c++ the amount of codes you need to write plus in different languages plus that's only programming we have like web development app development a lot of other things these are all, uh, you know separate domains but uh, like when i entered second year or like middle of my second year i discovered chat gpt and that was quite game changing because just imagine the programming time the amount of time you took to complete a program like a java program or a competitive uh, question from lead code it literally took me an hour sometimes to complete the question now you just give a prompt to lead, uh, give a prompt to chat gpt and that question is done in less than 5 minutes that is a lot of effort saved and that is a lot of time saved and you know time is money so 
it's truly i chat gpt actually feel is quite game changing now and then after that the introduction of dali basically text to image that is also that astounded me a lot just imagine you're providing an input as text and that model basically predicts what you've written and what it should display so that and it displays in forms of pixels because I, i've been studying a subject known as uh, image processing and forming an image is really not that easy you have to the gray levels the color contrast and everything which occurs during a formation of image is quite complex and we can see an ai doing that we can literally go into our phones and give a prompt and it generates a fresh image that's that's quite astounding and i feel that it has changed the way we are going to move forward because ai give me a minute i just want to word this properly i would say ai is game changing but at the same time not really dangerous like to our jobs or something because there is a certain limit uh, i feel it's a, it's a personal bias obviously it's a so uh, i feel that ai is peaking right now and it's it's more like a bell shaped curve because a, the problems which you give ai now at this point of time is just that you can give it simple problems and it will do it quite efficiently but if you give more problems and more complex problems the efficiency of of ai actually goes down you have to provide more prompts you have to give more clear prompts sometimes it even gets those wrong so i feel that although ai is booming right now i feel there are limitations at present which may or may not improve i am not really sure about that so two things i want to talk about uh so one is like devin's accuracy that they said in the release and all that is only around 14% right and which is not yeah. really useful okay. on a very commercial large Great. scale for example if you're sending a rocket right. to space and you only have a 14% chance of success like bro no one's going to take that risk right that's point one and like uh, on another sort of uh, unrelated note is what you mentioned about uh, having bigger and longer prompts for complex problems so i think going forward uh, if we have a better version of devin or like some other uh, new ai for software and stuff the only limitation for coding or for any other thing will be the imagination and the skill level of the prompter for example if me as a say 15 year old i don't know what a linked list is i don't know what an array is or whatever so how can i prompt devin or any other ai to solve a question with that right so I, in that case you would still need to understand what an array is what a linked list is what is a pointer and stuff like that so you'll still need that amount of basic information so it, when you said ki uh, there is still time for the ai to develop and it's not a threat i think in some aspects you're wrong because we have seen in videos that ai uh, devin can do upwork jobs which is literally taking our jobs right what do you want yeah. to say about that so i'll just give a context to what is devin first so basically uh, devin is like a software engineer ai so basically it has its own coding platform it has its own terminal basically it's an it has an it's a base llm language large language model with action so it llm generates stuff and you give it actions it from those actions it learns from those actions provides more so it's a continuous loop it learns from its mistakes and then produces again it's like a continuous loop 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 so that's how basically basic uh, so it generates stuff so devin like if you give it a prompt like say build a app build build a website so what it does so i just, just i'm not giving this a very top top overview okay so basically what it does is it goes through a lot of models lot of codes and it's it filters out it's clustering or basically filtering out most of them to find the most optimal ones and then it uses those and creates a, a website or an app according to its prompts then since it has its own terminal it even tests it it has its own debugger so it tests debugs and everything from those it gets relevant ki oh no this string is missing or this semicolon is missing or this is a logical error it then goes actually what it does is goes to google it types out what's the error and gets insight from it and then improves it it, it this is a continuous loop till it receive, uh, receives its uh, final you know output which is specified by the prompter so that is what devin is and that is quite game changing because an llm combined to think like from its actions is actually quite a huge thing like a huge thing because ai models like chat gpt dali even the new sora we have it we have to give a prompt to it 
like a base prompt and then work on it more here it learns from its own mistakes its own failures and then improves it on its own without any human this thing that is quite astounding and that is what in general devon is so coming more to uh, adit's question like uh, devon has only i'll just go into a bit more so devon has only 14% that's true but if you see even <coughs> so sorry so coming more about the devon's 14% rate so it has a 14% rate of solving github questions so basically you have many and many quest uh, like un- unfinished repositories on github okay and not many models like if you see gpt4 if you see the newest gemini which is introduced by google it, it has like a percentage of 2.1% so that is quite less whereas something like uh, devon has a 14% that's 14% that's a huge jump from 2 to 14 so that that fine it's not a guarantee but it's a it's a step towards the right thing but at the same time as what you know adit mentioned it it is quite it's just 14% 14% 86% you are supposed to do so that that that's present but this might grow over time i do agree but then there is where you know humans that's where humans as us come in like we provide creativity there is randomness or yeah actually randomness or a choice which comes in so like you wanted to interrupt me yeah so when you say we come in with the creativity but like i think we spoke about this on the call also so the first thing that ai did was to sort of take away our creativity not exactly take away but like when you do text to text when you do text to image text to video that is based technically taking away our creativity okay you can argue ki the creativity is in the guy who is texting ki i want to make a movie about superman meeting chota beam or whatever like that's that's your creativity but everything apart okay. from that is just ai right mm. like the sora can make a video of superman meeting chota beam and like i don't know whatever doing whatever right so when you say ki we bring okay. the creativity what do you mean exactly do you mean the prompt that we are giving no not not exactly basically creativity basically what defines us as humans as i want to talk about really philosophically and more human based okay so i weird coming from a computer science engineer but just like imagine if creativity at this point ai ai hasn't reached that point of creativity like we cannot distinguish between real life and artificial we still can dis- distinguish cre- stuff which is created by ai and by humans but then at the same time there is something where like i feel personally that humans in the future still have like a monopoly over i still feel like have a monopoly over creatives because like how i'm thinking of how should i word this again uh so like basically your the one one is prompts basically uh, what you wanted to do okay that's basically a request that is not more like creatively cool that is your thinking but then you know what it should is the what it decides is whatever it generate is it right that that also plays an effect right so basically what if you want to generate an image of a coke can but it generates an image of a pepsi can okay it gives a wrong result still you still need humans oh no this is wrong fine this is only for images what if it was more you know more important things right so that's where i still feel humans are still important and creative like creativity is, is quite a good question so i think uh, i just want to touch on something you said in the call earlier you said that computers yeah. cannot generate like uh, you mentioned ki when i when i ask siri or someone else to do to pick a random number from 1 to 9 it's not uh-huh. picking a random number so i think do you want to yeah. double tap on that i think you can yeah sure so basically we all we all have done a bit of programming if not also so basically we write r- randomness is in nature r- r- the concept of na- r- random luck it all comes from nature it does not machinery does not get in classified into random luck or anything much a machine is a basic machine follows a set of rules instructions analyzing compiling basically it follows a set of algorithms to decide what you want and what you want to achieve so a ra- something abstract such as random that that does not exist exist 
in computers you like whenever you say you want a random number from 1 to 12 what do you think you just process okay there are 12 numbers i can choose any like 6 5 3 but a computer doesn't work in that way a computer has a specific algorithm or maybe even a hash i'm not confident about this but then a hash code okay so it follows an algorithm or even hash code hash algorithm to generate a new number okay that's how basically randomness works so like on top of it so ai won't be creativity because that feature of randomness is really important to creativity okay because these ideas weren't pehle there they they never used to exist this is our ima- ma- imagination someone got randomly inspired by something and then they started a new portrait or an image okay these inspirations machines don't have anything called inspiration that still belongs to us humans we have to come and going forward like the future you know people say ai will take over jobs yeah sure that that might happen to some fields but then fields where ai is cannot be replaced by i mean humans cannot be replaced by ai is more or less the field of creativity because imagination ai and ai cannot imagine that still that power still belongs to us humans i feel and so that's why i feel that you know creativity still lies in the power of palm of humans even moving forward Yeah. So it's interesting when you mentioned about uh, like anything that's randomly generated. It's actually a set of algorithms that go on behind it, right? So even when you yep. talk about suppose a large language model, an LLM, isn't that yeah. basically just uh, for example? I-, I tweeted this a long time ago about how consulting might be like fully taken over by AI. So the idea was you build a model and then you fill like you fill it feed it with like. thousands of those case books that all these business schools come out with and you fill it with also these case studies random such uh, stories of how businesses solve problems and then after you fill it with all this data it's going to like you know analyze it and that's the algorithm and stuff and then you give it a problem saying i am a uh, an edtech uh, company my competitor is like super rich and i want to do something to get more customers so then it will cross check with its previous data saying okay Three years ago, I saw a similar case, and we did blah blah blah. But in another industry, this worked. What if it works here? So when you say that uh, computers don't have a random generating thing, is it more like just copy pasting something that they saw somewhere else? For example, I'll give you another example. In Dali, if you feed it like fifty pictures of a dog, like different uh, dogs, and then you say, uh, "Give me a dog ka picture," uh, it's going to pick one of the dog pictures, or is it like a collection of all the do- average of all dog pictures and then it gives you a picture of a dog does it work something like that am i somewhere close you see the one what you are talking about feeding 50 images of dogs basically that in ai ml is known as supervised learning basically in which you whatever data you feed into your model ha huh, you classified okay this is a dog this is a dog so the next time when it, then the model sees a dog it identifies okay this is a dog that's how basically how ai and ml works basically how face recognition any all of your recognition technologies work on that supervised learning so on the part of generating a new image i st- i still think it takes the average of the previously de- uh, the data you have fed it it doesn't like uh, how an image is formulated i i told you before also basically is basically adjusting the values of the pixels which are presented so it it knows for when you say i want a picture of a dog Okay, it knows. Okay, fine. From the previous ones, okay, I need a dog. Dog looks like this, but fine. But I need to. I can't use one from the previous ones. So it takes pixels from all from these images, combines them, and makes sure that resulting image is also a dog. So it's like a more. It doesn't create anything new. It's more of an average. It works on your past historical data which you have uh, fed into it. Do you think the consulting thing would work like a model, which just does? Consulting thing is a. good take on this so i feel uh, see imagine you as a consulting firm and me also as a consulting firm we both are using ai you are trying ai to beat me i am trying ai and say the similar ai to beat you okay just assume ki we are using the same ai and both of the power is same computational power is same so then who does it come down what do you think uh So we both are trying to fight each other with the same resources. Mm-hmm. So and it's just a famous line from a uh, famous car movie. Basically, it's not the it's not the machine; it's the driver which makes a difference. 
so basically in the end when all your resources are same how efficiently you make use of those resources okay fine okay, he is using ai to beat me i am using ai to beat him cool what is one major breakthrough which i can make as uh, some specific tuning to the ai or some different prompt okay cool okay uh, so that my competitor doesn't guess okay he just can't you know manually just say you know oh, my competitor did this give me another thing so that's where human creativity comes in basically how you use your ai how you use your own creativity okay something like making a uh, a uh, great just uh, let me think about an example for this uh just like even the example of colgate okay basically how it increases diameter size okay what now yeah, imagine okay pep student did it sorry pep student increases the size of its diameter okay just to produce more sales i mean more volume of paste to come out thus more sales but colgate what did colgate do it increased its advertising literally everywhere colgate 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 that's a like colgate if you hear a toothpaste name what's the first name that comes to your mind colgate that's advertising that's a really good move by their this thing and that is not taken by an ai right they both know okay you know ai is going to come this thing but then it's a person behind who's using the ai which matters this is a perception i wanted to give so to this you. again comes back to your pehle wala point saying that uh, yes ai will take some jobs but there is still a human like for example there's still a human there is even in the i don't know why i'm so hung up on this consulting thing but like uh if like the ai tells me that you can either uh, market it to students via like youtube videos or something or another option is to uh, go to schools and do it maybe competitor a does youtube competitor b does uh, schools School. it's up to you to decide like it's just going to give you a bunch of options and you choose right so at the end of the day uh it's your choice which affects the outcome so when you mentioned ki each business is using the same ai with the same power and same tools and stuff okay i think this sort of roughly relates to nash equilibrium which is this theory in game theory in which like when all of you guys are smart and you want to like outwit each other like i want to one up you you want to one up me but we're equally smart this is also i think one of the reasons most like top level chess matches end up in draws because you're both smart you're both trying to like win and like you end up drawing right so uh, when everyone has the same resources even uh, i forgot the uh, the incredibles right at the end of the incredibles when the bad guy gets all the superpowers and stuff he says when everyone's a superhero no one will be because if everyone's getting creative if everyone can generate a random video then who wins right the difference is in your creativity you can think about superman and chota bhim i can think about batman and spider man like how do you decide which is better right so what do you think about uh deter like how do you sort of uh measure i guess measure imagination like how do you say your idea of chowda beam and superman is better than my idea of batman and spider man how do you put a number or something like that to that it's not about rating your imagination it's how much your creativity is in that context is basically or in that context or in that use case okay so basically uh, chota bhim versus superman fine for kids okay is not like a 20 year or 25 year old adult will watch this so you want to make a movie but you need to you want to cater it a, a adult movie so you can't just put superman versus chota bhim there there you need something like batman or spider man so it also depends on the use case or the scenarios which are you are facing and you are present in so it's not always there's not like a number you can put on imagination obviously but then like it depends on the scenario you are in what creative idea in india it's called jugad but that's like a cheap one but in india uh, but to be to be frank with you what is something a creative solution or a or a solution where it's a clever solution not everyone can think of it but then that can get you out of the situation or a scenario in a faster more efficient way is that's what matters at the end of the day it's not like you want to please everyone you want to please yourself okay in that scenario that's what the thought process is well you know imagination at a certain point so i think uh, coming back to devin and like that whole conversation so in our call earlier you spoke about this thing called general ai or agi or ga one of those and G- general artificial intelligence yeah huh. so how far in terms of like years i, I know this is very as a random last minute you probably <laughs> have no idea how many stealth companies are out there building similar things and all so you never know but 
given that devin has a 14% uh, you know accuracy rate given that gpt mm-hmm. can now create videos given that we have so much going on how far do you think is uh, an ai which now has emotions can think about what it wants to do next and no longer needs a prompt that's a really a uh, really intrusive i mean in depth question you asked okay so fine so basically general artificial intelligence right basically and general artificial just to clarify what is general artificial intelligence is where a machine can think for itself it's basically llm plus actions but in a much more in depth way okay so it doesn't need a human at all a general artificial intelligence can think for itself perform actions for itself decide if that action is right or wrong give prompts to itself that is quite it's it's one of those terminator things which you've seen in movies so i think but, uh, just to cut you sorry when you spoke about the yeah. infinite loop thing in devon right that is yeah. half the problem is sort of that getting is solved half, half. yeah true true that is also part but devon is more uh, another po- uh, concept i want to introduce is guardrails basically in the future going forward we need to have some guardrails enforced on ai we can't ever let even elon musk if you remember he even said he told sam altman to stop production of ai uh, open ai basically for 6 months for like a good amount of time because this field if is like huge like if you have seen microprocessors pehle they used to be huge and now the uh, the growth of microprocessors from it's literally growing day by day and day. the amount of growth right now in ai is huge that's what i'm trying to imply so when something is growing what do you need something to keep it in a in guardrails basically to keep it safe so that it doesn't grow out of control what like just taking an example like your if you garden and you know your plants become like you know messy huge spreading all over the place you trim it down right you keep it beautiful you keep it nice so that's basically safeguarding ai yeah. so i think devin in this retrospect uh, is quite safeguarded like or it has a 14% rate of solving github repositories and problems that is fine but then it's it, i don't think it will take anyone's job as per se because yes it's doing automated jobs but then jobs don't only involve coding right they involve even you know hr things like you interact with your manager you interact with the client you interact like you receive functional requirements from your client you our output you your testing your results these need to be informed with client so it's not like what people expect in companies is the client gives a request and the uh, organization builds and gives to you it's not like that basically there's a really close coordination between a client and a company let imagine you give like a huge project to a company xyz okay so it's not like they build it and give it to you no you work on every module i mean they work on every module you know what is going on in every module you know okay this module does this this module has been developed this module is being tested okay so there's a close coordination and this close coordination cannot happen with like machines so you need human to human interaction in that that is the point i was trying to make through with this and like so devin basically does everything on its own so there is very less human interaction so it's not like it's providing you know uh, ki uh, i am at this stage okay if there are any changes you mo- you want me to make no you have given me a goal i will go till that goal if there are any change mid changes in the uh, functional requirements like okay fine you don't want me to make this but you want to make me you want me to make this i cannot stop in the middle i'll stop at the end goal only so that is one of the disadvantages of devin like it hasn't reached to that point that's that's what i wanted to say any more i can you come back to more you want to elaborate more on your question which question now i'm forgetting wait it is about the uh, <laughs> self loop thing right yeah more g- general and addition ha agi right? right so uh, yeah. i think the self loop part is sort of solved even if you consider a low accuracy rate it still has the that the least like the minimum viable function of knowing that okay i did this but this went wrong what do i do next and stuff like that so that is there now the only part that's left to become agi is the uh, what do i want to do the prompting part right which we argued earlier is the one thing that humans still have in our control like we control the prompts for now we, yeah exactly so that's what i wanted to ask like for how long more for how long that depends i still i still coming back to the same one how long we let it be like that it's 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 a choice 
we can either we want to do it fine fine we'll make it i mean i mean we'll make it as in in the future we'll work towards it basically generate ai does everything on its own without any human prompts we can work towards it but do we really want to go in that direction that is also a step we need to consider because ai these days is quite dangerous okay it's it is dangerous adding on to that like what if i feed an image of you okay to say okay. dali or whatever and i say uh give me a photo of rishab uh i don't know doing anything random that you probably might not be doing for example rishab jumping off a cliff or riding a cycle on an elephant or whatever and it is capable of creating such an image okay these are examples which are more like family friendly and stuff but it could go the other way really quick like i could it's just up, up to my imagination right i could ask dali to create an image which is not that you know you okay. get you get what i mean right so how do you say yeah, yeah, yeah. that first of all i'm pretty sure this is going to happen and i'm and in process of happening basically an agency okay and a, a worldwide agency i'm not joking a worldwide agency to control the flow of ai what how ai is used basically and not everyone can use ai in their programs they have to specifically take tokens okay like if you want to integrate chat gpt into your website or your uh, in your vs code code editors basically you operate in forms of token you pay that company ki i want to use your model to do my specific tasks okay so thus the power still lies in their main company's hands so a formation of like a international body of governance okay uh, saying that okay you are giving this thing but at the same time you should be careful in what they use if you know they are using it for the wrong thing like you know generating image uh, images of people doing wrong things or fake Im- fake images or actually all ai generated images are fake but like but uh, like illicit images more or less i want to go on that so like they should be informed okay uh, your ai being is being used for that okay cancel his this thing can stop sending tokens to him okay or penalize him or something like that because these company know okay like you know how how much token someone is using what the other amount quantity of token usage produces what and something because if you're generally building like a small app it requires a small amount of ai you're not consuming like 100 tokens per hour or 100 like 2000 tokens per day or something right you'll use a maximum of two or three tokens generally you know for doing everything but then if a uh, irregular spike in number of u- token usage uh, something like that Th- those things have to be monitored is what i feel that is one way to control you know illicit activities like this so now i am thoda interested in the venture capital and all space so we see a lot of startups using the word ai ai and all right now i want to sort of turn yes, the table right. yeah right now it's a very buzzword you can just say oh i run a cycle uh, agarbatti business using ai i'm like how where is ai there's no ai but okay i just want to flip this a bit for example so right now as of today 14th march 2024 uh devin exists i can create a solution for example if i have a problem uh give me a random problem uh an edge tech app okay we were talking about this earlier also a platform where uh, students like you and me college students can just like basically an you a udemy repo sort of i have an idea for the next udemy say and i ask devin to create a web- website it can create the website for me i can ask uh, chat gpt or dali to create a logo for me i can ask sora to create a marketing video for me right so in in theory i can build a business in less than say 5 hours right and again coming back to the whole human human point you might have the same idea of uh, udemy same thing right how different do you think our platforms will be i have the idea for the next udemy or the next instagram i give a certain logo give a certain video and all of that you have the same idea you use the same platforms and you create the same thing okay how different do you think our products will be so basically you use ai and i follow the conventions conventional methods no 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 we both use the same ai like both of us have the same okay. idea we want to make the next instagram oh, okay we use the same yeah. ai for the same reason like devin makes our website mm-hmm. chat gpt makes okay. our writing stuff okay i understood i understood i understood your question oh that that's quite a really interesting question that's a good one so talking about mostly edtech you, you want to go about edtech platforms right no like anything for example i said instagram right so you want to make instagram like 20 years ago okay. but with the technologies that we have today 
there's there's no yeah. instagram yes true it's true you can make instagram in a much more efficient manner right now in much more time saving method but then that's how we are going to move forward to in the future you might see that someone if you build instagram in like around a day or two days someone in the future might actually do it in a day or half a day okay, that's how technology generally moves okay so and talking about competitors it's true that's where also the human part comes in what specific needs we have like we have to do if before we start a project for software development engineers there's something known as a literature survey basically we survey what is there who are our competitors who are target audiences okay so basically if your instagram is more catered towards the older audiences and whereas mine is more catered towards the youths okay so our our thing will be different our thing uh, my logo the generator the logo generated by my dali will be more you know old plain styled yours will be more youthful looking more colorful your you you will feature your videos will feature more you know action new more catchy things my mine will be more plain simple right to the point crisp okay and so does my content okay so basically the content which you provide is also really matters on how different you are from the your competitor so it's not like you know you can provide the same thing you will always be different in some way or the other basically on who you target because you will also have different goals right when you build a project like i want to you know be popular among middle aged i want to help middle aged people you know stay up to uh, stay up to the world basically you know th- because they might not you know be tech savvy i want them i want my thing to be crisp and clean so that they can just message receive what their peer, friends you know around the world are doing whereas if i am building for the youth yes i want reels i want daily updates on what my friends are enjoying what they are drinking what they are having so that's how that's where the human part of it comes right you want a specific need you i another one wants a different need that's what i wanted to touch i guess that's it then from my side at least if you have any questions for me let's go forward sure i think the way we're approaching this is rishab has a more technical background because he's done cs and stuff and i sort of i don't know if i have i have a more businessy background i had a startup in 11th and 12th and i'm right now interning as a vc scout so i have a thoda businessy approach so if you have any questions for the businessy side yeah. then yes yeah just give me a minute i do have some really good questions for you so i am pretty sure uh, you know adit is the founder of notified okay so <laughs> so coming back to that so basically notified uh, com- can you tell me more about notified just inform us sure so in brief it's like instagram but for study notes on instagram you send pictures on notified you upload uh, your notes for example yeah. if i have an exam and but i am a good student i attend classes i write notes i upload notes on the app and 1000 uh, people or whatever how many ever people look at it and because those people are looking at it i get rewarded in terms of discounts from like say lens cart or boat or noise or whatever that's in a nutshell okay so what do you think about AI, using ai in notify what do you think if you could have the choice to implement ai and that would increase your business proposals what would you really do would you ai where where AI. would you improve your app more oh okay So one thing for starters is because Notefind is a more UGC app, user-generated content app. I have no say on like suppose you can upload a random picture of you doing karate and say it's a oh it's a note for organic chemistry, right? But I can use AI there because I'll feed it pictures of notes saying these are what organic reactions look like, and you doing surfing or whatever does not look like an organic reaction. So in content moderation, AI would help a lot. especially the like the computer vision i guess that's what it's called when you ha huh, those ones will really help a lot then uh maybe ui also like the ui that we had back in it was quite shit uh but I, i is there a ui uh ai like something that just does design canva actually canva has also come up with a canva also has ai integrated into it canva is also using ai so basically you can generate i actually ui ux has been really easy now because of use canvas ai and now actually even chat gpt since it had now chat gpt 4 as uh, uh, if you had seen the gpt 4 uh, demonstration basically someone had drawn a layout of a website on paper 
and taken a photo of it and given it to ChatGPT four, it actually created a website of it. So in UI 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 UX space, actually AI has improved a lot, a lot compared to the old and you know conventional centering a div or you know choosing what CSS fonts and colors to apply. That part has become quite easier. Nice. So then UI definitely because we need help in there. Then content moderation, like I said. Where else could you use it for like a note find type app? Maybe in like uh, figuring out what you would need next. Like for example, if you've searched for uh, inorganic chemistry for three days, and uh, you you still have been searching for inorganic chemistry, it might say, oh, since you're you're not that great at inorganic chemistry, some dude out there just uploaded this thing three seconds ago, and it's on P block elements. Would you like to look at it? That way, it could help with like a recommendation system, maybe. that could be quite useful then another thing that i was thoda thinking about is like uh i don't know how to like frame this right uh so yeah recommendation system and another thing is like sort of helping you get better like for example uh a lot of apps and these je focused apps have like this thing where if you get three questions wrong from uh, a certain chapter or a certain part of a chapter it will say revise this part of the chapter similarly if you've been looking at one particular uh, subject for too long you'll say okay uh, do you want more of these you want to learn more of these another interesting thing we can do with ai is make ai look at these timetables and date sheets that come out for example icse and cbse boards are going out and we say ki oh uh, uh, history is day after these are all the history notes that are there on the platform or like chemistry is in five i don't know why i'm saying chemistry so much but chemistry is in 5 days uh you can do that later but if you want to chemistry is here stuff like that so maybe just making that 1% better for the user like personalizing it more that's where i would use if note find was alive today it's not but yes and yeah, that's quite good and one more question i wanted to ask you see you are interested in venture capitalism right capitalist sorry venture capitalist Okay, so <laughs> sorry, I am quite uh, inexperienced. I mean, I don't know much about that field. So, what is the scope of AI in that field? Can you just tell me more? Like, how is AI will be used in venture capitalism? By that, do you mean making the VC ka job easier, or do you mean like changing the industry types? Actually, yeah, actually changing the industry. Then we can know how it makes the job easier as well for the VC. Okay, so um, there's a whole part of VC that happens between the first call and signing the term sheet. Term sheet is basically when I tell you that uh, I, as Adit Srinivasan, want to invest fifty uh, lakhs in your company uh, X Y Z for a ten percent stake, and uh, this is how much like help I can do and stuff like that. It's basically a bunch of like really technical things. Okay. so between the term sheet and the like first call and term sheet there are there's a ton of stuff that happens in between if we you use like there's something called crm which is customer response management or something like that crm is like very useful stuff in sales you can use something like that something similar in vc in which uh, you keep each other updated saying that okay you went and spoke to uh, somebody else you spoke to darsh also you are the you are the founder and the vc uh, you approached me today but uh, two hours later you also spoke to darsh and you're like i'm i'm raising do you also want to get in on the action so then i find out maybe using some form of ai i don't know uh, that you reached out to darsh and then i say ki okay he's looking for other investors too let's like make it faster let's get him the term sheet in like 5 hours or 6 hours something like that i don't exactly know why i'm targeting this part of the process but there's a whole lot of stuff that happens between that first meeting and the term sheet and using ai we can somehow streamline that and make that closer because if you reduce this time it's a win win for everyone vcs get to invest in like smaller time you as a founder get the money sooner and yeah and the news people get something to write about right so that part is something that we really need to really need to optimize for so yeah yes interesting quite an interesting day. one more thing is after i've invested suppose i have invested 50 lakhs in you uh i want to know what you're doing with my money right like bro i have not given as a udhar right i have given it to you for a 10% stake in your company or whatever so i want to know how you are using that money maybe something in that 
place to like ai sort of keeps a track on you and tells me how you are using the xyz amount i gave you i don't know where i'm going with this i don't know why i'm saying this but these are just use cases that you can maybe have for ai in the vc industry yes i hope that answered I, i've been talking about random things but i hope yeah, yeah but your when your ideas have been quite good it's good <laughs> cool then i guess that's it any anything else yeah how do you want that's... to conclude this like this is our first episode how should we conclude uh <laughs> thank you for I... sitting down with the srinivasans yeah, and we'll see you next time don't shit yourself what who says that? <laughs> bye <laughs> cool that's it for now uh, srinivasans out Yeah.